Welcome to Woo English, where we bring you captivating stories that help you learn English in a fun and engaging way. Our stories are designed to use clear and simple sentences, making it easy for you to follow along. We encourage you to leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. And don't forget to hit the like button to support our channel. It really motivates us to create more content for you. Remember, these stories are not just entertaining, they're also educational, designed to help you improve your English skills. Enjoy the story. Chapter 1 Early Years Ludwig van Beethoven was born in Bonn, Germany, on December 17, 1770. It was a cold winter day, and the town was filled with the sounds of the Rhine River. Beethoven was born into a family with a deep love for music. His grandfather, also named Ludwig, was a famous musician in Bonn. He played the organ and worked for the royal court. People knew him as a talented and respected man. Beethoven's father, Johann, was also a musician. He played the violin and the piano, but he had a difficult life. He struggled with alcohol and often drank too much. This made him angry and unpredictable. Johann wanted his son to become a famous musician, just like his father, but he used harsh methods to teach him. He believed that discipline and strictness would make his son successful. Despite his father's harshness, Beethoven's mother, Maria Magdalena, was a kind and gentle woman. She was the opposite of Johann. She took care of the family and provided warmth and love for her children. Beethoven had six siblings, but only three survived past childhood. Maria Magdalena made sure that Beethoven and his brothers had food to eat, clothes to wear, and a place to sleep. She also encouraged Beethoven's love for music. Beethoven's father began teaching him music when he was just a young boy. Johann hoped that Beethoven would become a child prodigy, like Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, who had performed in Bonn a few years earlier. Johann forced Beethoven to practice the piano and violin for hours, even late at night. Sometimes, Beethoven cried because he was tired and wanted to sleep, but his father wouldn't allow it. Johann's behavior was harsh, and Beethoven often felt scared and lonely. However, Beethoven's mother always tried to comfort him. She would sing lullabies to him and tell him stories to help him relax. She knew that her son had a special talent, and she believed that one day he would become a great musician. Maria Magdalena's love and kindness helped Beethoven through the difficult times with his father. As Beethoven grew older, he started playing music in front of small audiences. He was very talented, and people noticed his skills. By the time he was seven years old, he had already performed in public, playing the piano and the violin. People in Bonn began to talk about the young boy with extraordinary musical talent. They said he had a bright future ahead of him. Despite his success, Beethoven's family continued to face challenges. Johann's drinking habits grew worse, and he often missed work. This created financial problems for the family. To help support the family, Beethoven started playing music in local bands and orchestras. He worked with other musicians in Bonn and quickly became known for his ability to learn new music quickly. During this time, Beethoven also started composing his own music. He enjoyed experimenting with different melodies and harmonies. He would sit at the piano for hours, playing and creating new tunes. His family noticed his passion for music and encouraged him to keep practicing. Beethoven's early years were filled with a mix of joy and sadness. He loved music, but he also faced difficulties at home. His father was often angry, and his mother had to work hard to keep the family together. Despite these challenges, Beethoven's determination and talent shone through. He knew that music was his calling, and he was determined to become a great composer.
Chapter 2 Musical Prodigy Ludwig van Beethoven's life as a musical prodigy began when he was just a young boy in Bonn. He grew up in a small house filled with the sounds of piano and violin, the instruments his father played and taught. Beethoven's father, Johann, was a strict teacher. He believed that if he pushed his son hard enough, he could turn him into a famous musician like Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, who had wowed audiences as a child. Johann's dream was for Ludwig to become a celebrated child prodigy, known for his talent and skill. Johann's teaching methods were harsh. He often woke Beethoven in the middle of the night to practice piano and violin. He made his young son sit at the piano for hours, playing the same pieces repeatedly until he got them perfect. Johann's strictness was driven by his desire to see his son succeed, but it often made Beethoven feel isolated and stressed. Despite this, Beethoven showed remarkable skill and determination. He loved music, and even under the pressure of his father's demands, he found joy in creating beautiful sounds. Beethoven's first public performance came when he was just seven years old. The event was at a local theatre in Bonn, where Johann had arranged for his son to play. Beethoven walked onto the stage, his small hands nervously holding onto the piano's edges. The audience was curious to see what this young boy could do. Beethoven took a deep breath, closed his eyes, and began to play. The music was enchanting, and the crowd was amazed by his skill and focus. It was clear that this young boy had a gift. After that first performance, Beethoven's reputation as a child prodigy began to grow. People in Bonn started talking about the young boy with the remarkable talent. His father used this newfound attention to arrange more performances. Beethoven played at private events and local gatherings, impressing everyone with his ability to perform complex pieces at such a young age. While Beethoven's fame was rising, his family life remained challenging. His father continued to struggle with alcoholism, which made him unpredictable and sometimes violent. Beethoven's mother, Maria Magdalena, did her best to protect her children from their father's outbursts. She comforted Beethoven and encouraged him to keep playing music, reminding him that his talent was special. Despite the difficulties at home, Beethoven's passion for music never wavered. He spent hours practicing and experimenting with new melodies. He loved to improvise, creating music that was unique and expressive. As he played, he often lost himself in the sounds, finding solace in the notes and rhythms. This was his escape from the turmoil at home. Beethoven's talent soon attracted the attention of influential people in Bonn. He began taking lessons from Christian Gottlob Niefer, a respected composer and organist. Niefer recognized Beethoven's potential and took him under his wing. He taught Beethoven more advanced techniques and encouraged him to compose his own music. Under Niefer's guidance, Beethoven's skills grew rapidly and he started composing pieces for the piano and other instruments. One of Beethoven's early compositions was a set of piano variations which Niefer helped him publish. This was a significant moment in Beethoven's life as it marked his transition from a child performer to a composer. The publication of his music showed that he was more than just a prodigy. He was a creative talent with a unique voice. Beethoven's success as a young musician brought him new opportunities. He started performing for important people in Bonn, including the Elector, a powerful figure in the region. These performances helped Beethoven gain more recognition and opened doors for him to travel and learn from other musicians. His reputation as a skilled pianist and composer continued to grow, and he became one of Bonn's most talked-about young talents. However, with fame came pressure. Beethoven felt the weight of expectations from his father, his teacher, 
and the people who came to see him perform. He knew he had a special gift, but he also understood that he needed to keep improving to meet the demands of his growing audience. This pressure sometimes made him anxious, but it also fueled his determination to succeed. Beethoven's journey as a musical prodigy was just beginning. He was no longer just a young boy from Bonn. He was becoming a rising star in the world of music. His early experiences shaped him into a resilient and ambitious musician, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. The path to greatness was long and filled with obstacles. But Beethoven was determined to continue creating music that would inspire and captivate those who heard it. Chapter 3. Studying in Vienna Ludwig van Beethoven was a young man when he moved to Vienna, the city known as the heart of classical music. It was a place where great composers like Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart and Joseph Haydn had lived and worked. Vienna was full of elegant concert halls, grand opera houses, and talented musicians. Beethoven was excited to be in such a vibrant city, but he knew that it would not be easy. He had to prove himself in a place where only the best musicians could succeed. Beethoven arrived in Vienna in 1792, when he was just 21 years old. He had left behind his family and friends in Bonn, hoping to learn from the great composers and make a name for himself. But Vienna was a big city, and Beethoven quickly realized that he was just one of many talented musicians trying to make a career in music. He had to work hard to stand out among the competition. The first thing Beethoven did was find a teacher. He wanted to study with Joseph Haydn, one of the most famous composers of the time. Haydn was known for his symphonies and string quartets, and he had a reputation for being a great teacher. Beethoven was thrilled when Haydn agreed to take him on as a student. He hoped that learning from Haydn would help him improve his skills and gain recognition in Vienna. But studying with Haydn was not as easy as Beethoven had hoped. Haydn was often busy with his own work, and he didn't have much time to give Beethoven personal attention. This frustrated Beethoven, who was used to a more intense style of teaching from his father and his earlier teacher, Christian Gottlob Neef. Beethoven felt that Haydn's lessons were not pushing him to his limits, and he wanted more guidance and feedback. Beethoven's frustration with Haydn led him to seek out other teachers in Vienna. He began taking lessons from Johann Georg Albrechtsberger, a respected composer and organist. Albrechtsberger was known for his expertise in counterpoint, the art of combining different musical melodies into a harmonious whole. Beethoven found Albrechtsberger's teaching style more to his liking, as it was more structured and focused. He learned a great deal from Albrechtsberger, but he still felt a strong drive to create his own style of music. As Beethoven continued to study and compose, he also had to find ways to support himself in Vienna. He didn't have much money, and living in the city was expensive. To earn a living, he started giving piano lessons to the children of wealthy families. These lessons helped him make connections with influential people in Vienna, but they were also time-consuming. Beethoven would often spend long hours teaching during the day and then composing late into the night. Despite his busy schedule, Beethoven's determination never wavered. He wanted to be more than just a teacher. He wanted to be a famous composer. He worked tirelessly, creating new music and experimenting with different styles. He was known to carry a notebook with him wherever he went, jotting down musical ideas whenever inspiration struck. Beethoven's relentless work ethic was fueled by his dream of becoming one of the great composers. However, living in Vienna was not without its challenges. Beethoven often felt lonely in the big city 
far from his family and friends in Bonn. He didn't always fit in with the high society of Vienna, and his blunt personality sometimes caused tension with others. But despite these difficulties, Beethoven remained focused on his goal. He believed that his music could change the world, and he was determined to make that happen. During his time in Vienna, Beethoven began to gain recognition for his talent. He started performing in public concerts, where audiences marveled at his skill on the piano. He also began composing pieces that were unlike anything people had heard before. His music was powerful, emotional, and full of energy. Beethoven's compositions reflected his determination and his desire to break free from traditional music forms. As Beethoven's reputation grew, he caught the attention of other composers and musicians in Vienna. One of them was Antonio Salieri, a prominent composer and conductor. Salieri agreed to take Beethoven on as a student, teaching him about opera and vocal composition. This was a new area for Beethoven, and he was eager to learn from Salieri's expertise. He hoped that mastering different musical styles would help him become a more versatile composer. Beethoven's studies in Vienna were a turning point in his career. He learned from some of the best composers of the time, but he also developed his own unique style. His experiences in the city taught him the importance of hard work and perseverance. Beethoven's struggles in Vienna helped him grow as a musician and set him on the path to becoming one of the greatest composers in history. Chapter 4 Early Compositions Ludwig van Beethoven was beginning to make a name for himself in Vienna, but he knew that to be truly recognized, he needed to create something special. In the late 1790s, as he started to compose his first significant works, Beethoven's style began to take shape. It was a style that would eventually change the course of music history. Beethoven's early compositions were mainly piano sonatas and chamber music. These were pieces for smaller groups of instruments, like duets or trios. At first, Beethoven's compositions followed the traditional forms taught by his teachers, like Josef Haydn and Johann Georg Albrechtsberger. But it wasn't long before he started to experiment and push the boundaries of what was expected. One of Beethoven's earliest significant works was his Piano Sonata No. 8 in C minor, also known as the Pathetique Sonata. This piece was different from most piano sonatas of the time. It had a strong, dramatic opening with powerful chords that seemed to burst out of the piano. The music was filled with intense emotions, anger, sadness, and even hope. When Beethoven performed this sonata in public, audiences were amazed by its energy and depth. Beethoven's next big project was to write his first symphony. Symphonies were large compositions for an entire orchestra, and they were considered the pinnacle of a composer's work. Beethoven knew that if he could create a successful symphony, it would establish him as a serious composer. He spent months working on his Symphony No. 1 in C major, carefully crafting each section to create a dynamic and engaging piece of music. When the symphony was finally ready, Beethoven organized a public performance in Vienna. The concert hall was filled with people who wanted to hear what this young composer had created. As the music began to play, the audience was captivated by the lively melodies and energetic rhythms. The symphony had moments of lightness and joy, but it also had unexpected twists and turns that kept listeners on the edge of their seats. Beethoven's first symphony was a success, and people began to see him as a composer with a unique voice. Following the success of his first symphony, Beethoven continued to compose with a sense of urgency. He knew that his music needed to stand out in a city filled with talented composers. He began to experiment with new ideas, breaking away from traditional forms and creating music that was bold and expressive. 
Beethoven's piano sonatas became more complex, with sudden changes in tempo and dynamics. He used silence as a powerful tool, creating dramatic pauses that added to the tension in his music. One of Beethoven's most famous early compositions was his Piano Sonata No. 14 in C-sharp minor, also known as the Moonlight Sonata. This piece was unlike anything people had heard before. It started with a soft, gentle melody that seemed to float in the air. The music was hauntingly beautiful, with a sense of calm that drew listeners in. But as the sonata progressed, it built in intensity, with the final movement bursting with energy and passion. Beethoven's innovative approach to composition didn't go unnoticed. Other composers and musicians in Vienna began to take note of his unique style. Some admired his boldness, while others thought he was too unconventional. Beethoven didn't seem to care about the opinions of others. He was focused on creating music that came from his heart. He believed that music should express a wide range of emotions, from joy to sorrow, and he wasn't afraid to take risks to achieve that. As Beethoven's reputation grew, he started receiving more opportunities to perform and showcase his compositions. He gave public concerts where he played his own music, captivating audiences with his skill and charisma. Beethoven's performances were known for their intensity. He would play the piano with such energy that the strings would sometimes break. His passion for music was evident in every note he played. Despite his success, Beethoven's life was not without challenges. His hearing, which had been a problem since his early twenties, was starting to get worse. He sometimes had trouble hearing the orchestra during rehearsals, and he began to worry about how this would affect his career. But Beethoven didn't let his hearing loss stop him from composing. He continued to work tirelessly, finding new ways to create music that would inspire and move people. Beethoven's early compositions laid the foundation for his future success. They showed the world that he was a composer who wasn't afraid to take risks and break the rules. His unique style and innovative approach to music would go on to influence generations of composers, forever changing the landscape of classical music. As Beethoven's journey continued, he knew that he was just getting started, and he was ready to face whatever challenges came his way. Chapter 5. Hearing Loss Ludwig van Beethoven's career was taking off. His compositions were gaining popularity, and he was performing to packed concert halls in Vienna. But beneath the success and applause, Beethoven was hiding a secret. He was losing his hearing. It started as a faint ringing in his ears, which he thought might just be from too many late nights or loud rehearsals. But over time, the ringing grew louder, and he began to notice other signs. Sounds became muffled, and conversations were harder to understand. Beethoven was just in his twenties, and the fear of losing his hearing haunted him. At first, Beethoven tried to ignore the problem. He continued to compose and perform, but he found it increasingly difficult to hear the notes clearly. During rehearsals, he would ask musicians to play louder or repeat sections. His friends and colleagues noticed the changes, but Beethoven brushed off their concerns. He was determined to keep going, pretending that everything was fine. As the hearing loss worsened, Beethoven's anxiety grew. He worried about his career. Music was his life, and he couldn't imagine a world where he couldn't hear it. He was also concerned about his reputation. If people knew he was losing his hearing, they might doubt his abilities as a composer and performer. Beethoven began to withdraw from social gatherings, avoiding conversations where his hearing problems would become obvious. He didn't want anyone to know what he was going through. The impact on Beethoven's mental health was significant. He felt isolated and alone, 
unable to share his fears with anyone. The ringing in his ears grew louder, sometimes keeping him awake at night. Beethoven started carrying a notebook with him everywhere he went, writing down conversations because he couldn't always hear what people were saying. This new way of living made him feel disconnected from the world around him. One of the most difficult moments for Beethoven came during a performance in Vienna. He was playing the piano, and he couldn't hear the notes clearly. The orchestra seemed out of sync, and he was struggling to keep up. As he played, he felt a surge of panic, wondering if the audience could tell that something was wrong. The performance ended, and the audience applauded, but Beethoven knew he had to face the reality of his hearing loss. In 1802, Beethoven decided to leave Vienna for a while. He went to a small village called Heiligenstadt, hoping that the quiet countryside would help him cope with his hearing loss. It was during this time that he wrote the Heiligenstadt Testament, a letter to his brothers in which he poured out his feelings about his hearing loss. In the letter, Beethoven confessed that he had considered ending his life because of the pain and isolation he felt. He wrote about the deep sadness that came with losing his hearing and how it affected his career and relationships. But in the same letter, Beethoven also expressed his determination to keep going. He realized that he had a purpose in life, and that was to create music. Even if he couldn't hear the notes, he knew he could still compose and bring beauty to the world. This realization gave him the strength to continue, despite the challenges he faced. When Beethoven returned to Vienna, he was a changed man. He accepted his hearing loss and decided to focus on his compositions. He knew that he might not be able to perform in public as much, but he could still create music that would inspire others. Beethoven's hearing loss became a turning point in his life, pushing him to explore new ways of composing and expressing his emotions through music. As Beethoven's hearing deteriorated, he found new methods to communicate. He started using conversation books, where friends and visitors would write down their words, allowing Beethoven to read and respond in writing. This new way of communicating helped him stay connected with those around him, even as he withdrew further into his own world. The impact of Beethoven's hearing loss on his social life was profound. He became more isolated, spending long hours alone in his apartment, working on his compositions. He would play the piano by feeling the vibrations through the keys, relying on his inner sense of music rather than his ears. Despite the isolation, Beethoven's creativity continued to flourish. He composed some of his most remarkable works during this time, using his struggles as inspiration. The emotional turmoil caused by his hearing loss shaped Beethoven's music in unique ways. His compositions became more intense and expressive, reflecting the range of emotions he felt, anger, sadness, hope, and determination. Beethoven's ability to channel his inner turmoil into his music set him apart from other composers. He used his pain as fuel to create powerful and deeply moving works. Although Beethoven's hearing loss was a heavy burden, it did not stop him from achieving greatness. He continued to compose and create music that touched the hearts of listeners. His determination to overcome his challenges and focus on his art was a testament to his strength and resilience. Beethoven's journey through hearing loss was a story of suffering and triumph, proving that even in the face of adversity, one can find a way to create something beautiful. Chapter 6. The Heiligenstadt Testament In the autumn of 1802, Ludwig van Beethoven left Vienna and travelled to the small village of Heiligenstadt, just a few miles away. He was at a crossroads in his life, struggling with a deep sense of despair and frustration. His hearing was deteriorating rapidly, 
and he feared that he might never be able to perform or compose music again. The trip to Heiligenstadt was meant to give him time to reflect and hopefully find some peace. But instead of finding calm, Beethoven felt the weight of his future pressing down on him. During this time, Beethoven wrote a letter to his two brothers, Karl and Johann. This letter became known as the Heiligenstadt Testament. It wasn't a typical letter. It was more like a confession. In it, Beethoven revealed his inner turmoil and shared his darkest thoughts about his hearing loss and the impact it had on his life. The letter began with Beethoven explaining his isolation and loneliness. He wrote about how his hearing loss made it difficult to communicate with others. He couldn't enjoy conversations with friends or the sounds of nature, and he felt cut off from the world. Beethoven described the frustration of not being able to hear his own music clearly, wondering if he would ever be able to perform again. Beethoven's pain was evident in every word of the letter. He confessed that he had thought about ending his life, feeling that his hearing loss had taken away the very thing that defined him, his music. He felt a profound sense of loss, as if he was no longer the same person he once was. Beethoven's fear and despair were so great that he could hardly see a way forward. But even in the midst of this darkness, Beethoven found a glimmer of hope. He wrote that he couldn't give up, not yet. He had a responsibility to his art, to create music that would inspire others. Beethoven knew that he was still capable of composing, even if he couldn't hear as well as before. This realization gave him a sense of purpose, a reason to keep going. In the Heiligenstadt Testament, Beethoven expressed his determination to overcome his hearing loss through his music. He decided that he would dedicate himself to composing, using every ounce of his creativity and passion. He might not be able to hear perfectly, but he could still feel the vibrations of the piano keys and the power of the orchestra. Beethoven was determined to use his imagination to create music that would speak to people's hearts. The Heiligenstadt Testament was more than just a letter to his brothers. It was a turning point in Beethoven's life. It marked the moment when he decided to embrace his struggles and transform them into something beautiful. Beethoven knew that he would face many challenges ahead, but he was ready to fight for his art and his place in the world of music. When Beethoven returned to Vienna, after his time in Heiligenstadt, he was a changed man. He no longer hid his hearing loss from others. Instead, he embraced it as part of his story. Beethoven's determination to overcome his challenges became a source of inspiration for those around him. His friends and colleagues saw his resilience and admired his courage. Beethoven's compositions after Heiligenstadt were different. They were more intense, filled with raw emotion and powerful energy. His music became a reflection of his inner journey, capturing the highs and lows of his life. Beethoven's determination to keep composing, even in the face of great adversity, was a testament to his strength and creativity. The Heiligenstadt Testament was a deeply personal document, but it also had a universal message. It spoke to the struggle of finding hope in the midst of despair, of choosing to move forward even when the odds seem against you. Beethoven's story resonated with people because it showed that even in the darkest moments, there is a way to keep going. Beethoven's life after Heiligenstadt was filled with triumphs and challenges. He continued to compose music that would change the course of classical music history. His determination to overcome his hearing loss through his art was a powerful reminder that creativity and passion can overcome almost anything.
The Heiligenstadt Testament was not just a letter. It was a symbol of Beethoven's courage and his unwavering commitment to his music. Chapter 7. The Middle Period Beethoven's middle period began in the early 1800s, a time when he was still grappling with his hearing loss, but also finding new ways to push the boundaries of classical music. It was a time of transformation, both for Beethoven as a composer and for the music world at large. In this chapter, we explore the remarkable journey Beethoven undertook during this critical stage of his career, where he created some of his most iconic works. Despite his struggles with hearing, Beethoven's fame was growing. His compositions were gaining recognition, and he was establishing himself as a leading composer in Vienna. His Symphony No. 3 in E-flat major, also known as the Eroica, marked a turning point in Beethoven's career. It was longer and more complex than any symphony that had come before it, and it challenged traditional musical conventions. The Eroica was inspired by heroic themes, and Beethoven originally dedicated it to Napoleon Bonaparte, whom he saw as a symbol of liberty and revolution. The first performance of the Eroica was a momentous occasion. Beethoven conducted the orchestra himself, and the audience was captivated by the boldness and power of the music. The symphony had dramatic highs and lows, with intense crescendos and sudden pauses. It was a new kind of music, one that told a story and evoked deep emotions. Beethoven's innovative approach to composition was clear, and the Eroica set the tone for the rest of his middle period. However, Beethoven's growing fame did not shield him from personal struggles. His hearing continued to decline, and he had to rely on his inner sense of music to compose. This made his work more challenging, but it also forced him to be more creative. Beethoven's compositions became a reflection of his inner turmoil, filled with intensity and emotion. He used his music to express his frustrations, his hopes, and his determination to overcome the odds. During his middle period, Beethoven faced other challenges as well. He had strained relationships with his family and friends, partly due to his worsening hearing and partly because of his intense personality. Beethoven's temper was legendary, and he often clashed with others. Despite these difficulties, he had a close circle of friends who supported him through thick and thin. They saw his genius and knew that he was destined for greatness. One of the most famous works from Beethoven's middle period was his Symphony No. 5 in C minor. This symphony is instantly recognizable by its iconic four-note motif, da-da-da-da, which has become one of the most famous themes in classical music. Beethoven used this simple motif to create a powerful and dramatic symphony that resonated with audiences. The fifth symphony was about struggle and triumph, a theme that mirrored Beethoven's own life. The energy and intensity of the music captured the hearts of listeners, making it an enduring classic. Beethoven's middle period was also a time when he experimented with new musical forms. He composed piano sonatas, string quartets and concertos that pushed the boundaries of classical music. One of his notable compositions from this period was the Waldstein Sonata, a piano sonata known for its technical difficulty and vibrant energy. Beethoven's approach to the piano was innovative, and he created pieces that were both challenging and deeply expressive. Despite his success, Beethoven continued to face financial struggles. He often had to rely on the support of patrons and sponsors to fund his work. This made his life unpredictable, and he frequently moved from one apartment to another. Beethoven's lifestyle was chaotic, but his determination to compose never wavered. He spent hours at the piano, working on new pieces and perfecting his compositions. Another significant work from Beethoven's middle period 
was the Violin Concerto in D major. This concerto is celebrated for its lyrical beauty and technical brilliance. Beethoven's ability to create music that was both complex and accessible made him a unique composer. The Violin Concerto became a favorite among musicians, and it showcased Beethoven's talent for writing music that could convey a wide range of emotions. As Beethoven's fame grew, so did his influence on other composers. His innovative approach to music inspired a new generation of musicians who admired his boldness and creativity. Beethoven's compositions from the middle period were a testament to his ability to overcome personal struggles and create music that resonated with people across the world. He proved that even in the face of adversity, it was possible to achieve greatness. Beethoven's middle period was a time of both challenge and triumph. He faced the reality of his hearing loss, navigated strained relationships, and dealt with financial uncertainties. Yet, through it all, he continued to create music that was powerful and transformative. His innovative approach to composition and his determination to break away from tradition set the stage for a new era of classical music. Beethoven's journey through the middle period was a story of resilience and creativity, a story that continues to inspire musicians and music lovers to this day. Chapter 8 Symphony No. 5 Beethoven's Symphony No. 5 in C minor begins with four dramatic notes that have become famous worldwide. Da-da-da-dum. The opening of this symphony is so iconic that even people who aren't familiar with classical music recognize its powerful rhythm. These four notes carry a sense of urgency and determination, setting the tone for one of Beethoven's most celebrated works. Beethoven composed Symphony No. 5 during a tumultuous time in his life. It was the early 1800s, and his hearing loss was becoming more severe. Despite his challenges, Beethoven was determined to create music that would leave a lasting impact. The intensity of the opening motif reflects his inner turmoil, a constant battle against the silence that was creeping into his world. The symphony's first performance was in 1808 at the Theater under Wien in Vienna. It was part of a grand concert that featured several of Beethoven's compositions. The concert was long over four hours, and included a mix of new and older works. Beethoven conducted the orchestra himself, a task made more difficult by his hearing loss. The audience was curious to hear the new symphony, but the conditions weren't ideal. The theatre was cold, and the musicians were under-rehearsed. Despite these challenges, Beethoven's Symphony No. 5 stood out. As the music filled the theatre, the audience was captivated by the symphony's dramatic energy. The first movement, with its famous opening notes, grabbed everyone's attention. It was forceful and bold, like a storm rolling in. The music built in intensity, leading to powerful climaxes and then quieting down to softer passages. Beethoven's use of dynamics, how loud or soft the music is, created a sense of drama and tension throughout the movement. The second movement offered a contrast to the intensity of the first. It was slower, with a more melodic and lyrical quality. Beethoven used a repeating theme, varying it each time, creating a sense of development and progression. The beauty of this movement provided a moment of calm in the midst of the symphony's stormy energy. The third movement brought back the intensity with strong rhythms and a sense of urgency. It was fast-paced, with dramatic crescendos and energetic melodies. Beethoven used the orchestra's full power, blending different instruments to create a rich and vibrant sound. The movement led directly into the final part of the symphony, without a pause, keeping the energy high. 
The fourth and final movement was a triumphant conclusion to the symphony. It was joyful and celebratory with bright, uplifting melodies. Beethoven used the full orchestra, including additional instruments like trombones and piccolos, to create a grand and majestic sound. The final movement was a burst of energy, ending the symphony on a high note. When the concert ended, the audience applauded, but it was clear that Symphony No. 5 was something special. The dramatic opening notes, the intense rhythms, and the powerful crescendos left a lasting impression on everyone who heard it. Although the concert itself had its flaws, the symphony became a symbol of Beethoven's genius and creativity. Symphony No. 5's enduring legacy lies in its ability to capture the human spirit's resilience and determination. The iconic opening motif has been used in various contexts, from movies to commercials, and it has become a universal symbol of strength and perseverance. The symphony's dramatic structure, with its dynamic contrasts and emotional depth, has influenced generations of composers and musicians. Over the years, Symphony No. 5 has been performed by countless orchestras around the world. Each performance brings something new to the piece, highlighting its timeless quality. The symphony's popularity continues to grow, and it remains one of the most beloved works in classical music. Beethoven's Symphony No. 5 is more than just a piece of music. It's a journey. It's a journey from struggle to triumph, from darkness to light. It reflects Beethoven's own journey as he faced his hearing loss and continued to create music that would inspire generations. The symphony's enduring legacy is a testament to Beethoven's brilliance and his ability to capture the essence of the human experience in music. Chapter 9. Personal Struggles Beethoven's life was filled with challenges, both in his career and in his personal relationships. His volatile personality, combined with his growing hearing loss, created a complex environment that often led to conflict. This chapter delves into the personal struggles Beethoven faced and how they influenced his music. Beethoven was known for his strong will and fiery temperament. He had little patience for things that didn't meet his high standards, and he wasn't afraid to speak his mind. This straightforwardness, while admirable, often caused friction with those around him. Beethoven's blunt remarks and abrupt outbursts made it hard for him to maintain steady relationships, both in his personal life and within the music community. One of the biggest sources of tension was Beethoven's hearing loss. As his hearing deteriorated, he became more isolated and withdrawn. Conversations became increasingly difficult, and he often misunderstood what people were saying. This led to confusion and frustration, which in turn fueled his anger. Beethoven's friends and colleagues noticed the changes in his behavior, but they didn't always understand what he was going through. Beethoven's relationship with his family was also strained. His father, Johann, had passed away, leaving Beethoven responsible for his younger brothers. This new role as head of the family added stress to an already challenging situation. Beethoven's brothers, Karl and Johann, had different ideas about their futures, which often led to disagreements. Beethoven, feeling the weight of responsibility, tried to guide them, but his forceful approach only created more tension. In 1812, Beethoven's life took another complicated turn. He wrote a passionate letter to an unknown woman, known as the Immortal Beloved. The letter was filled with expressions of deep love and longing, suggesting that Beethoven had strong romantic feelings for this mysterious woman. However, the identity of the Immortal Beloved remains a mystery to this day, and the letter's romantic intensity is one of the great unsolved puzzles of Beethoven's life. The emotional turmoil Beethoven experienced 
from these personal struggles often spilled over into his work. His music became more intense and dramatic, reflecting the inner conflict he felt. Some of his compositions from this period were bold and powerful, while others had a sense of melancholy and sadness. Beethoven's ability to channel his emotions into his music was both a strength and a coping mechanism. Despite his difficulties with relationships, Beethoven did have a few close friends who stood by him through thick and thin. These friends understood his genius and saw past his rough exterior. They provided him with the support and companionship he needed during his most challenging times. Beethoven valued these friendships, but he sometimes pushed them away when his temper flared. Beethoven's personal struggles also impacted his career. His volatile personality made it hard for him to work with conductors and orchestras. He often clashed with musicians over interpretations of his music, and he had little tolerance for mistakes. This made rehearsals difficult, and some musicians were hesitant to work with him. Despite these challenges, Beethoven's talent and creativity continued to shine through, and he remained a respected figure in the music world. Beethoven's personal struggles reached a climax in the years leading up to his death. His health began to decline, and he experienced frequent bouts of illness. His hearing loss became complete, and he could no longer hear the music he composed. This deepened his isolation and added to his sense of frustration. Beethoven's once vibrant life was now filled with pain and uncertainty. However, even in the midst of his personal struggles, Beethoven's determination remained unshaken. He continued to compose music that resonated with audiences, drawing from his experiences and emotions. His late works, such as the Ninth Symphony, were a testament to his resilience and ability to overcome adversity. These compositions were filled with powerful themes of hope and unity, reflecting Beethoven's enduring spirit. Beethoven's personal struggles shaped him as an individual and as a composer. His complex relationships and volatile personality were part of what made him such a unique and fascinating figure. Despite the challenges he faced, Beethoven's legacy endures, inspiring countless musicians and music lovers around the world. Through his personal struggles, Beethoven demonstrated the power of perseverance and the ability to find beauty in the midst of chaos. His music continues to resonate because it speaks to the human experience, the highs and lows, the triumphs and struggles. Beethoven's journey was far from easy, but his indomitable spirit and unwavering commitment to his art are a testament to his greatness. Chapter 10. The Ninth Symphony Ludwig van Beethoven's Ninth Symphony is one of the most famous and celebrated pieces of classical music in history. Its creation was a remarkable journey, filled with challenges and breakthroughs. This chapter explores the significance of the Ninth Symphony, its revolutionary use of a chorus, and the profound message it conveyed to the world. By the time Beethoven began composing the Ninth Symphony, he was completely deaf. This was a monumental challenge for any composer, but for Beethoven, it became a source of inspiration. He no longer relied on his ears to create music. Instead, he relied on his imagination and memory. The Ninth Symphony was his boldest and most ambitious work, a testament to his creativity and resilience. The symphony's journey began in the early 1820s. Beethoven had already composed eight symphonies, each with its unique style and personality. But the Ninth Symphony was different. It was grander in scale and more complex in structure. Beethoven's vision for this symphony was to create a work that would unite people through music, a message of hope and brotherhood. This vision inspired him to experiment with new ideas, pushing the boundaries of what a symphony could be. 
the most revolutionary aspect of the Ninth Symphony was the inclusion of a chorus in the final movement. Traditionally, symphonies were instrumental works, but Beethoven wanted to end this symphony with a powerful vocal section. He chose Friedrich Schiller's poem, Ode to Joy, as the text for the chorus. The poem's message of universal brotherhood and joy resonated with Beethoven, who wanted to bring people together through music. Composing the Ninth Symphony was not easy. Beethoven worked on the symphony for several years, constantly revising and refining the score. He faced numerous challenges, from his deteriorating health to the practical difficulties of composing without hearing. Despite these obstacles, Beethoven's determination never wavered. He would sit at the piano for hours, feeling the vibrations of the keys and imagining the sounds of the orchestra. The Ninth Symphony had its premiere in Vienna in 1824, and the anticipation was palpable. People from all over the city gathered to hear Beethoven's latest work, eager to see what he had created. Beethoven himself conducted the orchestra, though he couldn't hear a single note. He relied on an assistant to help him keep time, watching the movements of the musicians to guide him through the performance. As the symphony began, the audience was captivated by its energy and depth. The first movement was bold and dramatic, filled with powerful crescendos and complex melodies. The music seemed to surge like a wave, carrying the audience along with it. Beethoven's use of dynamics, shifting from soft to loud, created a sense of tension and excitement. The second movement, a lively scherzo, provided a stark contrast to the intensity of the first. It was playful and rhythmic, with rapid tempos and energetic passages. The audience couldn't help but tap their feet to the beat, swept up in the symphony's infectious energy. The third movement was a beautiful adagio, a slow and lyrical section that showcased Beethoven's ability to create exquisite melodies. It was a moment of calm and reflection, allowing the audience to catch their breath before the grand finale. Then came the final movement, the moment everyone had been waiting for. The chorus entered with a triumphant burst of voices, singing Schiller's Ode to Joy. The sound of the choir, combined with the orchestra, was breathtaking. The message of joy and brotherhood filled the concert hall, resonating with everyone who heard it. Beethoven's bold decision to include a chorus in a symphony had paid off, creating a powerful and unforgettable climax. The audience erupted in applause when the symphony concluded. Beethoven, unable to hear their cheers, had to be turned around to see the standing ovation. Tears filled his eyes as he saw the overwhelming response to his music. It was a moment of triumph, a testament to his enduring spirit and the universal power of music. The Ninth Symphony's impact extended far beyond that premier performance. It became a symbol of hope and unity, resonating with people from different cultures and backgrounds. The Ode to Joy section has been used in various contexts, from political events to celebrations of peace. Its message of universal brotherhood continues to inspire generations, serving as a reminder that music can bring people together. Beethoven's Ninth Symphony remains one of the most beloved works in classical music history. Its creation was a journey of perseverance and innovation, a story of overcoming challenges to achieve greatness. The symphony's revolutionary use of a chorus and its profound message of joy make it a timeless masterpiece that continues to captivate audiences worldwide. Beethoven's legacy is firmly rooted in this symphony, a symbol of his genius and his ability to create music that transcends barriers. Chapter 11, The Late String Quartets Ludwig van Beethoven's Late String Quartets 
are considered some of the most remarkable and innovative works in the history of classical music. Composed during the final years of his life, these quartets pushed the boundaries of traditional music and explored new levels of complexity and emotion. This chapter delves into the experimental nature of the late string quartets, their intricate structures, and the profound impact they had on future composers. By the time Beethoven began working on the late string quartets, he was completely deaf. This profound silence did not hinder his creativity. Instead, it allowed him to compose from a place of deep introspection. Beethoven's late quartets were unlike anything that had come before, breaking free from conventional forms and embracing a more abstract and expressive approach to music. The late string quartets are a collection of six works composed between 1825 and 1826. Each quartet is unique, yet they all share a sense of experimentation and boldness. Beethoven was no longer concerned with pleasing audiences or following traditional rules. He composed for himself, creating music that reflected his thoughts, feelings, and experiences. One of the most famous of the late string quartets is the String Quartet No. 14 in C-sharp minor, also known as Op. 131. This quartet is remarkable for its unusual structure. Instead of the typical four movements, Beethoven created seven interconnected movements that flow seamlessly from one to the next. This continuous structure was revolutionary, allowing the music to tell a complex and captivating story without interruption. The opening of Op. 131 is hauntingly beautiful. It begins with a slow and somber melody played by the first violin setting a reflective and introspective tone. As the quartet progresses, the music shifts between moments of calm and intense energy. Beethoven's use of contrasting dynamics and tempos creates a sense of unpredictability, keeping listeners on the edge of their seats. The experimental nature of the late string quartets is also evident in String Quartet No. 15 in a minor, known as Op. 132. This quartet includes a movement called Heiliger Dankesang, which translates to Holy Song of Thanksgiving. Beethoven wrote this movement as a reflection on his recovery from a serious illness. The music has a sacred quality, with a gentle and soothing melody that conveys a sense of gratitude and serenity. As the movement unfolds, it transitions into more energetic and joyful passages, symbolizing Beethoven's journey from illness to recovery. Beethoven's late string quartets were not initially well received by audiences and critics. They found the experimental structures and complex harmonies challenging to understand. Some even considered the quartets too difficult or avant-garde, Despite this initial skepticism, the late string quartets gained recognition over time as masterpieces of classical music. Their intricate craftsmanship and emotional depth continue to captivate musicians and listeners alike. The late string quartets had a significant influence on future composers. They inspired a new generation of musicians to experiment with form and explore deeper levels of expression in their music. Composers like Richard Wagner and Arnold Schoenberg admired Beethoven's daring approach to composition, seeing it as a blueprint for pushing the boundaries of classical music. The late quartets also paved the way for the development of modern music, with their abstract and unconventional structures serving as a source of inspiration for contemporary composers. Despite the complexity and innovation of the late string quartets, they also carry a profound sense of emotion and humanity. Beethoven's personal struggles, his hearing loss, and his journey through adversity are reflected in the music. The quartets capture a wide range of emotions, from sorrow and despair to joy and triumph. 
Beethoven's ability to convey these feelings through music is what makes the late string quartets so powerful and enduring. Beethoven's late string quartets are a testament to his genius and his commitment to pushing the boundaries of classical music. These works continue to inspire musicians and audiences, challenging them to explore new possibilities in music. Beethoven's legacy is forever tied to these remarkable quartets, a reminder that even in the face of adversity, creativity and innovation can lead to extraordinary achievements. Chapter 12. Financial Struggles Ludwig van Beethoven, despite his growing fame and legendary status, faced significant financial struggles during his later years. As one of the most celebrated composers of his time, it might seem surprising that Beethoven had to deal with money problems. However, a closer look at his life reveals a series of challenges that made it difficult for him to maintain a stable income. In the early years of his career, Beethoven's income came from various sources. He earned money by giving piano lessons to the children of wealthy families in Vienna. He also performed in public concerts, and received commissions for his compositions. Additionally, he had patrons, wealthy individuals who supported his work financially in exchange for dedications or exclusive performances. These patrons were crucial to Beethoven's financial stability, but this arrangement had its downsides. Beethoven's volatile personality often caused friction with his patrons, he wasn't one to shy away from expressing his opinions, even if it meant upsetting those who funded his work. His blunt remarks and unpredictable behavior led to strained relationships, causing some patrons to withdraw their support. Beethoven's fiery temper and independence made it difficult for him to maintain these crucial financial connections. Another challenge for Beethoven was the inconsistent nature of the music industry in Vienna. Commissions and performances provided some income, but they weren't always reliable. Beethoven's health issues, particularly his worsening hearing loss, also impacted his ability to perform and teach. As his hearing deteriorated, he withdrew from public performances, limiting his earning potential. Despite these obstacles, Beethoven was resourceful. He negotiated deals with publishers to earn money from his compositions. These agreements allowed him to retain the rights to his music while receiving payments for each published work. However, dealing with publishers was not always straightforward. Beethoven often found himself at odds with them over payment terms and the quality of their work. He had a keen sense of his own worth, and wasn't afraid to demand fair compensation. Beethoven's financial struggles were further complicated by his role as the guardian of his nephew, Karl. After the death of his brother, Beethoven took on the responsibility of raising Karl, which added to his financial burden. He wanted to provide a good education and a stable life for his nephew, but this required additional funds. Beethoven's legal battles with Karl's mother over custody and support also drained his finances. To manage his financial difficulties, Beethoven sought creative solutions. He organized benefit concerts to raise money for his needs, drawing on his reputation to attract audiences. These concerts provided a temporary boost to his income, but they required significant effort and planning. Beethoven's health issues often made it challenging for him to maintain the energy and focus needed to organize such events. As Beethoven's financial struggles continued, he became increasingly isolated. He moved frequently, seeking affordable accommodations, often living in cramped and uncomfortable conditions. Despite his fame, Beethoven's lifestyle was far from glamorous. He had few luxuries, and relied on the support of friends and patrons to make ends meet. One of Beethoven's most significant financial challenges was his inability to work consistently. His health problems, combined with his hearing loss, 
limited his ability to compose and perform regularly. This unpredictability made it difficult for him to secure stable income. Beethoven's dedication to his art remained strong, but the financial pressures he faced took a toll on his mental and physical health. Despite the hardships, Beethoven's creativity and passion for music never wavered. He continued to compose groundbreaking works, even as he faced mounting financial difficulties. His later compositions, such as the Ninth Symphony and the late String Quartets, are a testament to his resilience and determination. These masterpieces were created under challenging circumstances, highlighting Beethoven's ability to overcome adversity through his music. Beethoven's financial struggles remind us that even the greatest artists face challenges in their lives. His story is a powerful example of perseverance and the drive to create, despite the obstacles that may come our way. Beethoven's journey through financial difficulties was not easy, but his enduring legacy shows that passion and creativity can triumph over adversity. Chapter 13 The Immortal Beloved In the summer of 1812, Ludwig van Beethoven wrote a passionate letter to an unknown woman. The letter was never sent, but it was discovered after Beethoven's death, tucked away in his personal belongings. It began with the words, My angel, my all, my very self, and was signed, Eternally yours, eternally mine, eternally us. This letter has since become known as the Immortal Beloved Letter, and it has puzzled scholars and music lovers for decades. Who was this mysterious woman, and what role did she play in Beethoven's life? The immortal beloved letter is filled with intense emotion, suggesting a deep and profound connection between Beethoven and the unnamed recipient. In the letter, Beethoven expresses his longing and devotion, hinting at a romantic relationship that was both passionate and tumultuous. He writes about the pain of being apart and the desire to be together, even if it meant overcoming significant obstacles. The letter's language is poetic and dramatic, capturing the intensity of Beethoven's feelings. Despite the clarity of Beethoven's emotions in the letter, the identity of the immortal beloved remains a mystery. Scholars have proposed several theories about who this woman might have been, but no one knows for sure. The lack of concrete evidence has made this mystery one of the most intriguing aspects of Beethoven's life. One of the most popular theories is that the immortal beloved was Antony Brentano, a wealthy Viennese woman who was known to have had a close relationship with Beethoven. She was married to a successful businessman, but her connection with Beethoven was deep and personal. Some believe that the letter's affectionate language and the timing of its writing point to Antony as the most likely candidate. However, there is little concrete evidence to confirm this theory. Another theory suggests that the immortal beloved could have been Josephine Brunswick, a Hungarian countess with whom Beethoven had a long and complex relationship. Josephine was a talented pianist, and she and Beethoven shared a deep passion for music. Some believe that their relationship evolved into a romantic connection, with the letter reflecting Beethoven's feelings for her. Yet, as with Antony Brentano, there is no definitive proof to confirm Josephine's identity as the immortal beloved. A third theory proposes that the immortal beloved was Giulietta Guicciardi, an Italian noblewoman who was one of Beethoven's piano students. Beethoven dedicated his famous Moonlight Sonata to Giulietta, suggesting a special bond between them. However, Giulietta's age at the time and the circumstances of their relationship make this theory less likely. The mystery surrounding the immortal beloved has captivated many people, leading to speculation and debate. Some believe that the lack of clarity adds to the romantic allure of Beethoven's life, 
while others see it as a reflection of the complexities of his personal relationships. Beethoven was known for his intense personality and volatile emotions, and the immortal beloved letter reveals a more tender and vulnerable side of him. Beethoven's romantic life was often complicated by his health issues, particularly his hearing loss, which made it difficult for him to maintain stable relationships. His fiery temperament and bluntness also contributed to his struggles with intimacy. Despite these challenges, the immortal beloved letter shows that Beethoven was capable of deep and passionate love. His words convey a sense of longing and devotion, hinting at a romantic connection that was both beautiful and tragic. The mystery of the immortal beloved continues to intrigue scholars and music lovers alike. It adds a layer of complexity to Beethoven's life, highlighting the emotional depth that underpinned his music. The letter's poetic language and intense emotion reflect Beethoven's capacity for profound feelings, even in the midst of personal and professional struggles. Chapter 14 Final Years Ludwig van Beethoven spent his final years in a state of declining health and increasing isolation. The great composer, known for his passionate music and fiery temperament, faced numerous health problems that limited his ability to work and interact with others. This chapter explores the last years of Beethoven's life, highlighting the challenges he faced and the profound impact his music had on those around him. By the late 1820s, Beethoven's health had deteriorated significantly. He suffered from a range of ailments, including severe stomach pain, liver disease, and chronic respiratory issues. These health problems made it difficult for him to compose and perform, and he spent much of his time confined to his modest apartment in Vienna. Despite the physical pain, Beethoven's creativity continued to thrive. He worked on his compositions, albeit at a slower pace, and found solace in his music. One of the most challenging aspects of Beethoven's final years was his complete hearing loss. He could no longer hear the music he composed, which forced him to rely on his imagination and inner sense of sound. This isolation from the auditory world deepened his sense of loneliness. Beethoven rarely left his apartment and when he did, he often felt disconnected from those around him. Conversations were a struggle, and he relied on written notes and conversation books to communicate. Despite his isolation, Beethoven had a small circle of friends who remained devoted to him. These friends, aware of his declining health and increasing isolation, provided much-needed support. They visited him regularly, bringing food, medicine, and companionship. Beethoven's friends also helped him manage his finances, as his health issues made it difficult for him to handle practical matters. These close friends were a source of comfort during his final years, offering a sense of stability in the midst of uncertainty. Beethoven's relationship with his nephew Karl became a central focus during his final years. After the death of his brother, Beethoven became Karl's legal guardian. He took this responsibility seriously, but the relationship was often strained. Karl struggled with his own issues, including depression and a failed attempt at military school. Beethoven's intense personality and high expectations created tension between them, leading to frequent arguments. Despite the difficulties, Beethoven genuinely cared for Karl and wanted the best for him. As Beethoven's health worsened, he became more reclusive. He rarely attended social events, and his once active lifestyle gave way to long periods of solitude. This isolation, however, did not diminish his influence in the world of music. Beethoven's compositions continued to inspire and captivate audiences, and his legacy grew even as he withdrew from public life. His works were performed in concert halls across Europe, and his reputation as a musical genius 
was firmly established. One of the most significant events during Beethoven's final years was the premiere of his Ninth Symphony in 1824. Despite his declining health, Beethoven attended the performance, which took place at the theatre an der Wien in Vienna. The symphony's powerful message of joy and unity resonated with the audience, and the final movement, featuring the Ode to Joy, received a standing ovation. Beethoven, unable to hear the applause, had to be turned around to see the audience's enthusiastic response. This moment of triumph was a rare highlight in his otherwise difficult final years. In the last months of his life, Beethoven's health deteriorated rapidly. He became bedridden, unable to leave his apartment. His friends and supporters rallied around him, providing care and support. Despite his suffering, Beethoven maintained his sense of humour and continued to work on his music. He sketched out new compositions and made plans for future works, even as his strength waned. Beethoven passed away on March 26, 1827, at the age of 56. His death marked the end of an era, but his impact on the world of music was far from over. Thousands of people attended his funeral in Vienna, paying their respects to the man who had transformed classical music. The procession was a testament to Beethoven's enduring legacy, as musicians and music lovers from all walks of life came together to honour his memory. In his final years, Beethoven's music continued to inspire those around him. Despite his health problems and isolation, he remained a symbol of resilience and creativity. His compositions, filled with emotion and innovation, spoke to the human spirit's strength and determination. Beethoven's journey from suffering to triumph is a story that resonates with people across generations, reminding us that even in the face of adversity, we can create something beautiful. The final years of Beethoven's life were marked by struggle and pain, but they also showcased his indomitable spirit. His friends and supporters provided the support he needed, and his music continued to touch the hearts of those who heard it. Beethoven's legacy endures, a testament to his genius and his ability to find light in the midst of darkness. Chapter 15 the death of Beethoven. As Beethoven's health worsened in the early months of 1827, he became bedridden, confined to his small apartment in Vienna. The great composer, who had spent his life creating some of the most powerful music ever written, was now facing the end. Despite his declining condition, Beethoven remained mentally sharp and continued to work on his compositions. This chapter explores the final days of his life, the moments leading up to his death, and the profound impact he left behind. Beethoven had been struggling with various health problems for years. He suffered from severe stomach pain, liver disease, and chronic respiratory issues. As his condition deteriorated, he became weaker and more reliant on the care of his close friends. His once vibrant personality, known for its intensity and energy, had dimmed with the onset of illness. Despite his physical decline, Beethoven's spirit remained strong. He continued to express his thoughts and ideas through his music, even as he grew weaker. He sketched out new compositions and discussed his plans for future works with his visitors. Beethoven's determination to keep creating, even in his final days, was a testament to his passion for music. Beethoven's close friends and supporters rallied around him during this difficult time. They took turns caring for him, ensuring he had food, medicine, and companionship. These friends, who had stood by Beethoven through thick and thin, became his lifeline in his final days. Despite his reclusive nature and fiery temperament, Beethoven valued these friendships, and they provided him with comfort and support 
as he faced his final moments. The final days of Beethoven's life were marked by pain and suffering. His condition grew worse, and he experienced frequent bouts of severe discomfort. Despite the medical treatments of the time, there was little that could be done to ease his suffering. Beethoven endured the pain with courage, never losing his sense of humour or his ability to engage with those around him. On March 26, 1827, Beethoven's condition took a turn for the worse. He became unresponsive, and his friends and supporters gathered at his bedside, knowing that the end was near. It was a cold and stormy day in Vienna, with thunder rumbling in the distance. The storm seemed to reflect the intensity of Beethoven's final moments. As Beethoven lay on his deathbed, he opened his eyes one last time and raised his right fist, as if to challenge the storm outside. It was a powerful and dramatic gesture, capturing the essence of his spirit. A few moments later, he took his final breath, and the room fell silent. Beethoven, the great composer and musical genius, was gone. News of Beethoven's death spread quickly throughout Vienna and beyond. The outpouring of grief was immediate and intense. People from all walks of life, from musicians and artists to ordinary citizens, mourned the loss of a man who had changed the course of classical music. Beethoven's funeral, held on March 29, 1827, was attended by thousands of people. The streets of Vienna were filled with mourners, all gathered to pay their respects to the great composer. The funeral procession was a grand and solemn event, reflecting the profound impact Beethoven had on the world of music. Musicians and performers from across Europe came to honour his memory and the streets were lined with people who wanted to say goodbye to the man who had inspired them with his music. The scene was a testament to Beethoven's enduring legacy and the deep connection he had made with people through his compositions. Despite the sadness and grief surrounding Beethoven's death, there was also a sense of celebration. People recognised that his music would live on, continuing to inspire future generations. Beethoven's legacy was secure, and his contributions to classical music were immeasurable. His compositions, from the powerful symphonies to the intimate piano sonatas, would continue to be performed and celebrated for centuries to come. Beethoven's death marked the end of an era, but his influence on music and art was just beginning. His willingness to push boundaries and break traditional rules had paved the way for new forms of artistic expression. The profound emotions and innovative structures in his compositions inspired countless composers and musicians, shaping the course of classical music and beyond. As the storm outside Vienna subsided and the city returned to its normal rhythm, the memory of Beethoven remained alive. His music continued to echo through concert halls and practice rooms, a constant reminder of his genius and his enduring spirit. Beethoven's journey from suffering to triumph, his relentless pursuit of artistic excellence and his ability to create beauty even in the face of adversity are a testament to his greatness. The death of Beethoven was a poignant moment in history, but it also marked the beginning of his legacy. His music continues to captivate and inspire proving that the power of art can transcend time and space. Beethoven's life was a story of passion, struggle and ultimate triumph, a story that resonates with people from all walks of life. His legacy endures, a reminder that even in the face of great challenges, we can find the strength to create something extraordinary. Chapter 16. Beethoven's Legacy Ludwig van Beethoven's legacy extends far beyond his lifetime. The profound impact of his music on future generations is a testament to his genius and innovation. This chapter explores the enduring influence of Beethoven's work, 
examining how it inspired countless composers and continues to be celebrated around the world. Beethoven's music is timeless. It has been performed in concert halls across the globe for more than two centuries, captivating audiences with its emotional depth and dramatic power. His compositions, from his symphonies to his piano sonatas, are now staples in classical music repertoires, and they continue to resonate with listeners of all ages. One of the reasons Beethoven's legacy endures is his ability to convey complex emotions through his music. His compositions are filled with a wide range of feelings, joy, sorrow, anger and triumph. This emotional intensity allows listeners to connect with his music on a personal level. When Beethoven's Symphony No. 5 begins with its iconic four-note motif, listeners feel the energy and urgency of the music. Similarly, the serene opening of the Moonlight Sonata evokes a sense of calm and introspection. Beethoven's capacity to create these emotional landscapes is what makes his music so compelling. Another reason for Beethoven's lasting impact is his innovative approach to composition. He was a pioneer in breaking traditional musical structures and experimenting with new ideas. His symphonies were longer and more complex than those of his predecessors, and his use of dynamic contrasts and unexpected transitions kept audiences engaged. Beethoven's Symphony No. 9 with its revolutionary use of a chorus in the final movement, was a groundbreaking departure from traditional symphonies. This spirit of innovation inspired future composers to push the boundaries of classical music, leading to the Romantic era and beyond. Beethoven's influence can be seen in the works of many composers who followed him. Richard Wagner, for example, admired Beethoven's dramatic approach to music and incorporated similar themes into his operas. Johannes Brahms, initially hesitant to compose symphonies due to Beethoven's towering presence, eventually embraced his influence and created works that paid homage to the great composer. Even modern musicians, from rock bands to film composers, have drawn inspiration from Beethoven's bold and emotional style. The legacy of Beethoven's music also extends to the broader cultural landscape. His compositions have been used in films, television shows and commercials, adding depth and drama to visual storytelling. The Ode to Joy from Symphony No. 9, with its message of universal brotherhood, has become an anthem for peace and unity. It has been performed at major events worldwide, from political rallies to celebrations of international cooperation. Beethoven's music has transcended the concert hall, becoming a symbol of hope and inspiration. Beyond his influence on music and culture, Beethoven's legacy also serves as a reminder of the power of perseverance and resilience. His life was marked by significant challenges, including his hearing loss and health problems. Despite these obstacles, Beethoven continued to create music that would change the course of classical music history. His determination to overcome adversity and focus on his art is a story that resonates with people from all walks of life. Beethoven's legacy is celebrated in many ways. Music festivals and competitions are held in his honor, drawing musicians and audiences from around the world. His birthplace in Bonn, Germany, has been turned into a museum, allowing visitors to learn more about his life and work. Concerts dedicated to Beethoven's music are held regularly, showcasing his most famous compositions and lesser-known works. These events keep Beethoven's spirit alive, ensuring that his music continues to inspire and uplift. As we examine Beethoven's legacy, it becomes clear that his impact is as relevant today as it was during his lifetime. His music continues to be a source of inspiration for musicians and composers, encouraging them to explore new possibilities and express their emotions through art. Beethoven's journey from suffering to triumph, his relentless pursuit of artistic excellence, 
and his willingness to push the boundaries of classical music make him a true icon. Beethoven's legacy reminds us that art has the power to transcend time and space, connecting people across generations and cultures. His music speaks to the human experience, capturing the highs and lows of life, and providing a sense of comfort and inspiration. As we listen to his compositions, we are reminded of the profound impact one person can have on the world. Chapter 17. A Life in Music Ludwig van Beethoven's life was a journey filled with extraordinary challenges and remarkable triumphs. As we reflect on his story, it's clear that his music and his legacy have left an indelible mark on the world. This concluding chapter explores Beethoven's journey, highlighting his resilience, his ability to create beautiful music despite immense challenges, and the lasting influence he has had on classical music. Beethoven's life began in a modest home in Bonn, Germany, where he was born into a family of musicians. His father, Johann, was a strict and demanding teacher, and his mother, Maria Magdalena, was a source of warmth and comfort. From a young age, Beethoven showed remarkable talent, and his father had high hopes that his son would become a famous musician. Beethoven's early years were marked by intense music lessons and public performances, setting the stage for his future career. As Beethoven grew older, he moved to Vienna to study with renowned composers like Joseph Haydn and Antonio Salieri. Vienna was a vibrant city, filled with opportunities for a young musician. However, Beethoven faced numerous challenges, including his father's alcoholism, financial struggles, and the pressures of making a name for himself in a competitive environment. Despite these obstacles, Beethoven's determination and talent propelled him forward. One of the most significant turning points in Beethoven's life came when he began to lose his hearing. This gradual decline in his ability to hear was devastating for a composer and musician. Beethoven experienced deep emotional turmoil, fearing that his career might be over. However, instead of giving up, he found a way to use his inner sense of music to continue composing. His Heiligenstadt Testament, a letter written to his brothers, revealed his despair, but also his determination to persevere through his music. Beethoven's resilience and creativity allowed him to overcome his hearing loss and create some of his most famous works. His Symphony No. 5, with its iconic four-note motif, became a symbol of struggle and triumph. The Ninth Symphony, with its revolutionary use of a chorus, was a bold and innovative composition that carried a message of universal brotherhood. Beethoven's ability to transform personal challenges into powerful music is a testament to his strength and artistic vision. Throughout his life, Beethoven's relationships with friends and family were often strained. His intense personality and fiery temper made it difficult for him to maintain steady connections. Despite this, he had a small circle of close friends who supported him through thick and thin. Beethoven's relationship with his nephew Karl was complicated, marked by legal battles and emotional tension. However, even in the midst of these personal struggles, Beethoven continued to compose music that would inspire generations. Beethoven's final years were marked by declining health and increasing isolation. His hearing loss had become complete, and his physical condition made it difficult for him to work and interact with others. Despite these challenges, Beethoven's spirit remained strong, and he continued to create music that resonated with audiences. His late string quartets, known for their experimental structures and emotional depth, are a testament to his enduring creativity. When Beethoven passed away in 1827, the outpouring of grief was immense. Thousands of people attended his funeral in Vienna, 
a reflection of the profound impact he had on the world of music. Although Beethoven's life was filled with suffering, his journey from struggle to triumph continues to inspire musicians and music lovers to this day. His compositions are performed in concert halls worldwide, and his legacy is celebrated in festivals and museums dedicated to his memory. Beethoven's lasting influence on classical music cannot be overstated. He transformed the genre, pushing the boundaries of traditional composition and opening new possibilities for artistic expression. His ability to convey complex emotions through his music, his innovative approach to structure, and his enduring spirit have made him a symbol of resilience and creativity. As we conclude this remarkable journey through Beethoven's life, we are reminded that his story is more than just a biography. It is a testament to the power of the human spirit. Beethoven's ability to create beautiful music despite immense challenges, his relentless pursuit of artistic excellence, and his lasting influence on classical music make him a true icon. Beethoven's life in music is a story of passion, determination, and triumph. It shows us that even in the face of great adversity, we can find a way to create something extraordinary. His legacy endures a reminder that the power of music can bring people together, inspire change, and provide comfort in times of darkness. As we listen to Beethoven's compositions, we are reminded of the enduring strength of his spirit and the timeless beauty of his art. <laughs>